Peace family, welcome back to the channel where we discuss issues impacting black people and our fight for liberation. Today we're diving into a critical conversation. In this video, we'll explore the top three critiques that black intellectuals and activists, such as Richard Wright, W.E.B. Du Bois, Ralph Ellison, and George Padmore, have made about communism. These critiques stem from the unique position of black people in the United States and across the African diaspora. Our first critique is that communism tends to oversimplify or ignore race. Many black thinkers argue that Marxist theory focuses too heavily on class and doesn't adequately address the specific dynamics of racial oppression. Richard Wright, who had an early affiliation with the Communist Party, saw this firsthand. Wright believed that while communism had potential for black liberation, it often neglected the unique challenges black people faced in a racist society. In his novel Native Son, Wright critiques the left for its inability to truly grasp the psychological and social dimensions of racism. For him, the Communist Party failed to appreciate how deeply racial prejudice permeated American life. Though they spoke about equality, Wright felt the party's commitment to racial justice was often rhetorical and secondary to its broader focus on class struggle. George Padmore, a former communist and pan-Africanist, took this critique a step further. He argued that communism was Eurocentric, designed around the issues faced by European workers, and thus ill-equipped to tackle the colonial and racial struggles of black people in Africa and the diaspora. Padmore left the communist movement and became one of the key figures in pan-Africanism, advocating for African self-determination and anti-colonial movements. In his view, the Communist International placed European priorities above the fight against colonialism in Africa and the Caribbean. The second critique is communism's organizational limitations in terms of addressing black liberation directly. W.E.B. Du Bois, one of the foremost intellectuals in black history, initially saw communism as a promising vehicle for addressing economic and racial injustices. During the 1920s and 30s, the Great Depression and widespread poverty made capitalism appear incapable of solving social inequities. The boys was particularly inspired by the Soviet Union's early claims of racial equality, social justice, and workers' rights, hoping these principles could advance black liberation in America. However, as time passed, the boys grew disillusioned. He saw the Soviet state growing more authoritarian under Stalin, straying from the ideals it professed. The brutal purges, the lack of political freedom, and suppression of dissent clashed with his lifelong commitment to democracy and intellectual independence. By the late 1940s, he openly criticized Soviet policies, realizing that true liberation could not be achieved through any system that denied fundamental freedoms to the people. The boy's journey with communism reflects his relentless pursuit of justice, but also his insistence on moral integrity and freedom as prerequisites for black empowerment. Similarly, Ralph Ellison, who was briefly involved with the Communist Party, also criticized its failure to connect with black experiences. Ellison's classic novel, Invisible Man, depicts the party's indifference to the protagonist's individual identity and the specific needs of black people. He showed how the party often co-opted black struggles for its own political gains, without genuinely addressing racial concerns. Ellison's critique emphasized the need for a politics that didn't just see black people as tools for the revolution, but respected their unique history, needs, and interests. Our final critique is communism's inconsistent stance on colonialism and global black struggle. George Padmore's journey is instructive here. As a prominent black communist in the 1930s, Padmore was initially drawn to the promises of international solidarity and anti-imperialism within the communist movement. But over time, like the others, he became disillusioned. Padmore critiqued the Soviet Union for abandoning its early anti-colonial rhetoric once it began to pursue diplomatic relations with European colonial powers. For Padmore, this was the ultimate portrayal. He believed that communism, which claimed to champion the oppressed, could not be trusted if it wasn't fully committed to fighting against colonialism and for African independence. He ultimately left the communist movement denouncing it for being too aligned with Soviet state interests and too willing to compromise on black liberation in the global South. The boys too voiced concerns about how communism interacted with African struggles. 
While Du Bois admired the Soviet Union for its anti-racist rhetoric, he was cautious about fully aligning the black liberation movement with any single political ideology, particularly one that seemed to shift its priorities based on state power. Du Bois ultimately advocated for a more pan-Africanist approach where African and diasporan struggles took precedence over alignment with global powers like the Soviet Union. To wrap things up, the critiques of communism by black intellectuals like Richard Wright, W.E.B. Du Bois, Ralph Ellison, and George Padmore highlight a common theme. The unique struggles of black people cannot be fully addressed by a political system that prioritizes class over race or that compromises on anti-colonialism. While communism offered important critiques of capitalism and oppression, it often fell short when it came to addressing the specific dynamics of black people in the black liberation movement. That's not to say there's nothing of value in Marxist thought. Many black leaders, including Du Bois and Wright, recognized the potential for collaboration, but insisted that any true liberation movement for black people had to center their experiences with both race and class. If we're going to build a better world, our politics must be just as complex and nuanced as our struggles. We must interrogate any system or ideology, whether capitalist, communist, or otherwise, that doesn't fully see and value us. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and leave your thoughts in the comments below. Till next time, keep pushing. Peace.